In this video, we are going to see how to fit a classification model with the extreme gradient boosting algorithm in R. We will be working with the XGBoost package in R and we will be running it through the CARET package. So for this example, we will work with the cardio dataset, which has information about cardiovascular diseases. So here the dependent variable is a binary variable. Uh, cardio where zero means no occurrence of cardiovascular disease and one means occurrence of cardiovascular disease so the first step here will be to convert the categorical variables gender and all the variables from cholesterol to cardio from numeric data type to factor data type and after that we will change the labels of the values in the dependent variable cardio from zero to x zero and from one to x one then we are going to partition the data into training and test sets. We will be using the CARET package. Uh, and then after setting the random number generator seed, we will use the create data partition function to well, create a vector uh, with uh, selected row numbers for creating the training partition as we do here. And then we use that same object to create the test partition. So in the training set, we will end up with 70% of the data and in the test set we will end up with 30% of the data then well we can register the parallel backend which will allow us to run the, uh, uh, the code in, in parallel thanks to the carried package so here we will edit the arguments in the train function from carried to fit the extreme gradient boosting algorithms so the most important piece here is that the method will be set to XGB linear. This is one of the methods available for XGBoost. So if we go to the documentation of the current package in chapter 6, we're going to find all the available models. And then using this search box, we can type XGBoost and we will find the methods for fitting extreme gradient boosting uh, uh, models. So there are three methods. We can start by evaluating this first one, XGB linear, which has four hyperparameters. To learn more about the hyperparameters, we could go to the documentation of the XGBoost package. And then there we can find the XGBoost function and we will find the description of the, the parameters, for example, the eta parameter, which controls the learning rate, or the n rounds um, argument, which uh, determines the maximum number of post iter iterations. So here, this will help us to understand and learn more about the parameters and functioning of this method in R. So in the train function, we will enter first the formula with the model that we want to fit. So here, cardio is the dependent variable, and then we use a period to denote that we are going to work with all the other variables in the data set as predictors. Then we enter the argument data with the object that we will be using for training. And for this model, we will be using tenfold cross-validation as a resampling method for evaluating performance of the models for the different combinations of hyperparameters and for selecting the best model. So here we set the tenfold cross-validation and then we set class props to true and we select the summary function um, to class summary to be able to calculate the area under the receiver operating characteristic curve for the metric to evaluate the model performance. So we set the random number here to seed and then we uh, will start with the fitting of the models. We can use the system.time function to measure the time R takes for uh, running this code. Okay, so this took some 38 seconds. We can take a look at the results. Here we can see the combination of the hyperparameters and the resulting average under the ROC curve along with the sensitivity and specificity. And at the end, we see the best values. In this case, well, eta was held constant at the value of 0.3. And then for the other hyperparameters, then the best values were n rounds 50, lambda 0.1, alpha 0.1, and eta 0.3. So, well, this combination will produce the highest area under the ROC curve. We can, well, take this table and sort the results in decreasing order by the ROC column, and then we could uh, take a look at that 
top row uh, then we will find that in this case the area under the ROC curve was 0 0.67 if we wanted we could uh, conduct a more exhaustive search of best values for the hyperparameters and to do that we could add here the tune grid argument and then we would enter a grid with values for each of the hyperparameters so for example for lambda we could try uh, we could enter a vector with values that we want to try let's say 0 0.1 0 0.2 and so on and then we would do the same for the other hyperparameters for alpha we would enter a vector and same for n rounds and so on for now we will be working with the default values that train the train function tries so we can evaluate the variable importance with the bar in function from caret in this case age and weight were the two most important variables and well this would be one method but as there are more methods available we could try a second method such as xgb3 this has more hyperparameters to tune uh, so basically what we do is we change the method here and then type xgb3 and that would be basically the only modification that we would need to do and then we can run this code okay so after 30 seconds this is finished we can take a look at the result we see the table with the hyperparameters and all the combinations for the different values that were evaluated and then we see the results here for the ROC metric so the best combination of values was the one uh, listed here and well to see more directly the top result we can take the uh, resulting object from the uh, training we select the results and then we arrange the table in decreasing order based on the ROC column and then we can take a look at the top result in this case the average area under the ROC curve was 0.72 so let's remember that in the previous results the ROC was 0.67 so that means that we could um, uh, select the results with the XGB3 method as the best model if we take a look at the variable importance then we can see that age weight are the two most important mm, variables so at the end when we select our best model then we can evaluate the performance of that best model on the test set so we can use the confusion matrix function to compare the predicted values against the actual values and then we define what is the positive class in this case we can use the uh, class x1 or class 1 which refers to the uh, occurrence of cardiovascular disease so for prediction basically we enter the selected model here uh, as an input to predict and then we say okay let's predict on the test set so we can take a look at the confusion matrix and then where the accuracy was 0 0.6092 and the sensitivity was 0 0.55 and specificity 0 0.66 let's remember that sensitivity is the accuracy on the positive class and specificity is the accuracy on the negative class so at the end we can create the ROC curve we can use one of the packages available for ROC in R such as the PROC package and then we run the ROC function the first argument is response here we enter the actual values so we select the cardio column from the test data set and then in the predictor argument we enter the predicted probabilities and so we enter xgb3 as the first input to the predict function and then the second input is the test set and for type we enter prof for probabilities and we select the probabilities for the positive class in this case so we can calculate that table and then we can plot the rc curve with this command so we can see here that the across all the thresholds the ROC curve is above the uh, random distribution in other words the model is doing better than random guessing across all the thresholds and we can calculate the area under the ROC curve 
and here we are testing this model on the test set so this value is 0 0.66